here for the motion portion of our presentation today, um, if you've been in the audience over the years as I've conducted these, you've seen me talk about the latest drive or perhaps the latest servo motor that we have available and trying to keep this to topics that are current, we really haven't released anything in that realm in terms of drives and motors. What we've seen is more of an expansion not something new, but it, we've expanded our power range in things like the Kinetics 5700, the uh, introduction of the VPC uh, motors, takes that uh, range and really expands it out for us. So what I decided to do today was not focus on that, but just bring one product to give a primary focus to, um, something that came out about a year or so ago with uh, very practical use for people out there. And uh, that product is the Ethernet IP encoder output module. And what does it do? Uh, the output module allows you to synchronize third-party devices to your integrated motion system. So that really means that if you have something external out there as third-party equipment and you need to have some relationship with a motion axis inside of Logix, how would we typically build that? And this module solves that problem for us. In the old days, the way to maybe appreciate what it does for us today is to take a look at what we used to do in the old days. And if we didn't have something like this, our options were pretty limited, weren't they? We would have to physically, one, perhaps go out to the machine and mount a physical encoder. We would take that encoder and we would actually run it all the way back to our system right, to get that interface built. But uh, that may not always be the best answer, is it? You're on the machine trying to find the proper amount of real estate to mount that. Got to run it all the way back to your cabinet. Uh, not always the best option. The second option shown here was perhaps since we already are controlling that axis with our own motor, we might be able to take that signal that's coming back on that feedback cable and split it. Right, Rockwell and other manufacturers offer splitter boards, buffer boards, right? Things that basically will take that signal from the motor and divert it to another path. Again, not the ideal solution, is it? Because you're compromising, in many cases, the signal integrity, right? These are low-level critical signals, and a lot of times grounding and things like that can create issues once we start splitting that uh, signal there. So um, how we actually make this work is inside Studio 5000, inside Logix Designer. We actually have AOIs already pre-built, so it's more of a configurable type product. Okay, so we can go in there and configure any one of two channels for that module. Okay, so we'll give you two outputs. You can see it's in a D sub format, so we're using our breakout board terminal kits that are used on the drive so we can go ahead and get access to those pins. And you'll also see here it also has dual Ethernet. And this is important because this allows us to uh, go into a lot of different topologies, right, including a DLR network. So what can it actually port out? You're seeing here anything that is actually going to be uh, used as integrated motion inside the Studio 5000 program. So this, of course, includes all the kinetic servo drives, right? all the 5000 series, all the Ethernet SIP enabled, as well as the PowerFlex series here you see as well. So if these are configured as motion axes, we can take these and port them out through the module. And here you'll also note not only the real Ethernet IP axes, but we can also create virtual axes and port these out as well if we need to build that relationship. Just to do a little deeper touch on exactly what its capabilities are, you'll see that it does have configurable outputs. So we have the standard A quad B encoder, or we can also put out a PTO or pulse train output. Um, it can go differential or single-ended. Keep in mind, you will have to supply your own power supply if you do go single-ended with it. You can use command or actual from within the program as the source for what you're outputting. It also gives Z-pulse generation, so if you need an index pulse, a marker, you can use that as well. So the neat thing as well, as we mentioned with the uh, dual Ethernet ports on there, it is sort of acting in the same manner as our drives do, as in using the embedded switch technology. So because of that, we can support missed or late packet ride through. And the output frequency is also adjustable, and you'll see the maximum cable lengths there pretty long runs for standard encoders, typically with the standard low uh, voltage TTL signals, you're gonna be about 50 to 100 feet. We get a little better here with this particular module. And just to finish up real quick, just some applications. Obviously, you guys are aware of what's out there, but things like camera systems, conveyors, robots, line, track line tracking, uh, glue systems, all of these that basically need to build that relationship with something inside of Logix 
um, we can do that with this particular module.